All right, guys, welcome to episode number 201 of the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thanks, as always, for being here. Thank you for your rating, ratings and reviews on whatever platform you're listening to this on. Welcome to 2023. Here we go. We're uh, neck deep into our Digital Barbell Monthly Member Challenge, which is a step challenge. We're only on day... I'll be stepping right now. We're on the podcast. Yeah, seriously. We're on day three right now, uh-huh. and got to be honest, like, we set a, you know pretty aggressive goal for ourselves and we had to do a little bit of stepping in the house last night to reach our goal this is going to be interesting (laughs) we're really gonna have to be intentional about getting our steps in earlier in the day if we're gonna hit our goal yeah day one we got to take the dog for a walk and so you know that's a lot of steps and then the second day we didn't get that our schedule didn't allow for it and so by the end of the night we're like Walking around uh-huh. the house, marching in place. Like, I'm I'm getting this goal. Yeah, but I think we had 20 or 30 clients sign up for 30, this yeah. one. And um, who won the last one? Shirley won the last uh-huh. challenge, which was a, a three-prong challenge between gratitude, drinking water, and what was the last thing? Um, getting three workouts Th- minimum Three workouts week. per week. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Shirley for winning I mean, that. And these aren't just challenges. These, these come with prizes. For December's winner got a rogue gift card. January's winner gets an ab mat. And we were brainstorming uh, on our call with Coach Haley this morning about what next month's challenge yeah. is going to be, and I'm excited about that one. Mm-hmm. So um, today we have a Q&A episode for you, but before we get into that, reminder that we are running a special in January yeah. right now that the first 10 started out as 10. It's at nine now. Clients that join for a custom training program with ourselves or one of our coaches gets a free month of one-on-one nutrition coaching. Mm-hmm. You know just as well as I do that your potential really lies in unlocking your nutrition. (laughs) It's the thing that is the hardest part to tackle, but we can help you. We can take you by the hand, see where you're at right now, see what changes we need to help you make to your nutrition. So you can finally unlock your potential and all that effort you're putting into your workouts. Mm -hmm. The missing piece is probably your nutrition. So take us up on this offer to let us help you with it for free in addition to getting an amazing workout program and a coach to be by your side the yep. whole time. And don't miss out because we will run out of spots. So, all right, you ready to get into this? Sure. Well, let me say this. I'll put a link for where you can apply for coaching in uh-huh. the show notes of this episode, or if you can always reach out on social media too. Yeah, today we've got a great um, episode. We've got some questions from from our You've got Q's. From our list, yeah. We've got A's. <laughs> so, so we had some great questions come in. All right, let's so roll. So let's go. All right, first one. Does my morning tea count for hydration. How about sparkling water and lemonade? I like that they put some specifics yeah, in here. Me too. This is actually a member that um, did the the challenge. That's probably why hydration is on his mind. Do mm-hmm. you have any uh, thoughts on this one before we get, before I just blabber on I, about I, it? I'm assuming you're just going to take this one, so let's go. <laughs> no, I don't want to just take it, but um, let's look at the underlying goal between trying to drink a certain number of ounces of water per day. Yes, there are health benefits to being properly hydrated, especially early in the morning for your digestion, for your joint health, all this kind of stuff. But what we're trying to do with having a water goal is not only that, but establish the habits of a a person who's just living a fitness oriented lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So technically does tea, sparkling water, lemonade count towards your hydration for the day? Absolutely. But the reason we talk about water so much is because we're trying to make you a person who naturally defaults to eating and drinking less processed things. So Mm -hmm. I have tea in my cup right here and it's hydrating me, Mm -hmm. but I also want to make sure that I'm drinking a lot of water for the day, for the day, for like all the health promoting benefits and just to make sure that, um, I'm a person who drinks a lot of water. So yes, those things do hydrate you. Now he, the one thing he said was lemonade. Yeah. That one, that one I'm not sure about just I think it depends on what, what it is. Right. Is it, is it a sugary lemonade? Is it you wouldn't what? want to you wouldn't want to count any like, like calorie containing yeah. drinks towards your hydration goal because mm-hmm. you're kind of working against yourself because you're right. taking in all these extra calories and you know you just don't need to be you need to be eating those calories for all the benefits of that yeah and then you start to kind of like if lemonade counts does like canned diet soda count does you know you start to kind of blur the lines of like where what right. we're what we're going for here like this, you were this, talking about this makes me think about like somebody who is doing paleo and they spend ninety nine percent of their time on the internet searching for <laughs> paleo brownie recipes and paleo granola and these kinds of things. Yeah. Like you're kind of defeating the purpose of trying to eat a minimal, minimally processed diet. If you're trying mm-hmm. to like game the system to sneak all these other kinds of things in. So do they hydrate you? Yes. Should you focus mostly on real water? For so sure. Can you count lemonade? I wouldn't count the lemonade. Cause I would say that unless you're making your own lemonade, that's like going to be a fairly processed water. 
Right. Some yeah. kind of infused lemon water kind right. of thing. So no, I wouldn't count um, canned drinks like diet sodas and lemonade towards your daily water goal. Yeah. You know, something like coffee or tea that you're adding the water in yourself, mm-hmm. that's mostly water. So yeah. I would count those. My mom for Christmas got me and one of those water bottles that you can and I keep forgetting infuse. Infuse. I keep forgetting to like get the the things. I need to get like some yeah. cucumbers and I'm excited about trying it because it's just like here. We, we have some raspberries in the refrigerator yeah. that are about to go bad. Infuse away. <laughs> infuse away. <laughs> I gotta try that. All right, next one. What are the pros and cons of owning a coaching business? Bring in the heat right off the <laughs> bat here. <laughs> Maybe they want to work for us. Who knows? You want to start with this one? Go ahead. Um, I would say the number one thing, well, maybe not the number one thing, but the first thing that came to mind was that, you know, running a fitness oriented business encourages us to make our health a priority and encourages us to stay fit. Definitely. Not that like being shredded is a prerequisite for being a good coach, Mm -hmm. but um, we, you know, we understand the battles that our clients are facing because we're working out ourselves several times per week. We're trying our best to make you know, healthy choices mm-hmm. with our food. So it keeps us down in the trenches of doing the kinds of things that we're encouraging people and coaching people to do yeah. on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, that was one of the things I think I struggled with at the gym is like, I think like in, in a CrossFit gym, it's like you, I, I, I like when I first opened it, I kind of felt like I needed to be like the fittest, the, person, the fittest in the person in the room. I'm like, I got to be everybody in every workout. And like, that <laughs> yeah. is not the case. You are coaching them. You are coaching them to be better. You want them to be better than you, be stronger than you, be faster than you. So Plus I quick, you're pretty I quickly, competitive. I, am pretty competitive. <laughs> I quickly learned that I did not need to be the fittest person in the room yeah. to, to own a gym. And but, then beyond that, obviously there's the obvious thing about, it's just amazing to you know, be in a relationship with these people and yeah. li- like literally help them improve their lives right. and see that spill over into the yeah, other people yeah, in I mean, their lives. Back to the gym. That was the mission of the gym was to like, um, what's the, what's the wording? I'm losing it. Touch uh, people's touch lives. Touch people's lives. And then those who know them for yeah. the better. And we've carried that over to digital barbell and we see it happen all the time of just like you touch somebody's lives, you make these significant changes in their life. And this k- spills over to their friends, their family, their children. I think that's an amazing thing. It's it's really good from our perspective to see it happen. But like, you know, you guys that are listening to this, that are, you know, going through your own fitness journey, Mm -hmm. you should know that you might not even know the people that you're impacting. We have people reach out to us for coaching and end up working with us. And they they say, yeah, I saw so-and-so post on Facebook about, you know, the work they were doing with you. And that's why I I Mm -hmm. reached out. And they never even told the other person that they, you know, were a quote, referral. So that person had an impact on somebody and they ended up changing their life Mm -hmm. and improving their health. And like, you're setting an example, example for people, whether you know it or not. So think about that, you know, as you You make the decision to get up and go work out tomorrow morning. I think cons, we have to bring this up because that's what they asked. Um, you know, in the beginning, I think it was really hard for us, um, owning an online business was to like, um, differentiate the hours between like business and not, and not work, you know, personal. When, you, personal when you're, when you're working for yourself, when you're working from your home, it's easy to just like blur the lines. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing we've had to be intentional about is like, is like establishing work hours during the work week Yeah, for us and our employees and kind of, you know, I mean, it like, it literally took several years before we we're to the point where we're like, we should be closed on holidays, just like every other right. business is closed on holidays. We do not have to work yeah. 24 hours a day, it, seven days a week. It really happened when we had, we, we, we started having employees right. that like, we were like, we need to give them some time off. Well, we, uh, we should probably take these times off too. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like we felt guilty. Like we don't feel bad if you log on to the bank's website and they're like, we're closed on Memorial yeah. Day. Oh, that makes sense. Or, but. You, or like a software that we have, like if you don't, you know, you go online for support and like, we'll be closed, you know, we'll, we'll reopen on Monday at eight and like, okay. Yeah. But for some reason with, when it's just like, when it's a smaller business yeah, the, and you, put you the think pressure like on it's yourself. okay to like, you know, you're like, they should be open all the time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we no, should be open all the time. <laughs> maybe that's just some false thing we were putting on ourselves. Yeah, I, I think it is. And then the last thing I would say on that is just that it can be hard because you are, in, we are in a relationship with all of our clients. Like we know what's going on in their lives, especially when you get involved in people's nutrition, you start finding out all kinds of things about things that people struggle with. And like, it's a bit of an emotional roller coaster sometimes because we want the absolute best for all of our clients. We Mm -hmm. bend over backwards to try to get them the results that they want. Like, you know, I would be lying if I 
said I didn't lose sleep worrying about mm -hmm. like a client who's struggling and how I can better help them. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, you get really <laughs> emotionally involved. Yeah. I'm sure any other coach that's listening to this in any capacity or teacher, like they yeah. want the best for their kids. And like at the end of the day, like you can coach somebody the best that you can. You can provide them all the tools, the strategies, the mm -hmm. encouragement, the accountability, the motivation, but it's going to be up to them whether they do it. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to draw that line between feeling responsible for somebody's results and knowing that they ultimately have to be the one to lift the weight and put the food in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So it can be hard sometimes. Yeah, for sure. All right. What's uh, next? Oh, up here. Uh, I think <laughs> I see it. Shouldn't have her glasses on guys. No, I'm like the, the sentence doesn't make sense. <laughs> you want me to read this to, one? What to do when the day, what I to guess. do when the day is too busy to eat consistently. Okay. It's what, kind of phrase yeah. a little strange. What to do when the day is too busy to eat consistently. I find I eat breakfast and then struggle to eat again before two or 3 PM. Yeah. I think this one is pretty common. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. personal challenge, to everybody out there, let's all agree not to use the B word in 2023. Busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, just again, I've said it many times on this podcast. Let's just all agree. That unless told otherwise, we're, we're all, all busy. We're all busy. <laughs> if you're listening busy. to this episode, you are not sitting on a beach <laughs> without a job, without responsibilities. You are busy. So, yeah. Um, I think it's easy to get tripped up in this and say, you know, he said, what to do when the day is too busy to eat mm -hmm. consistently. Most of the times when we are too busy to eat consistently or eat at all, it's not that we're too busy. We're just unprepared mm -hmm. for the situation that we're in. Now, if it's just like a single isolated incident, we're like, man, I had no idea these errands were going to take so long. Right. I was so busy. But if this is like a normal thing for you, it really comes down to being prepared. Mm -hmm. Like the busiest person in the world. Who do you think the busiest person in the world is? <laughs> like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos? Or, they're probably not that busy because yeah. they delegate everything. But I don't know. Um, the busiest person in the world still makes time to eat. Yeah. Now, the caveat to this is Jack Bauer. In all the seasons of 24 <laughs> that we watched, ate. I never saw that guy eat one single thing. I, mean, I guess when you're just like running on adrenaline, yeah. um, you just don't get hungry. Or it could well, be just because it's a TV show. Okay. The, the, but the point you're trying to make is that like... Hey, don't interrupt my joke. <laughs> I'm still going. There's two things that can happen. If if you are... I think I think like, you know, we take for granted like we have jobs where like, you know, flexibility in our jobs. But like if you have a job where you are in front of people and you literally cannot eat then a couple of things can happen there. You can bump up your breakfast. So that like leaves you fuller for longer. Maybe like have like little things like mints or something that you can put in your water mm -hmm. that you can, you know, intake in front of people to, to hold you over till the next meal and then bump up that next meal. Mm -hmm. That's one case. If it's just like, I'm busy at my desk and you can eat at your desk. Like that's where being prepared right. comes in. Like having a, like one of those cooler bags right there at your desk where you can grab a yogurt at 10 AM, you know, where you can grab a banana or you can grab an apple, just like having some food with you all the time that you can grab. Is and that all just comes down to preparation. preparation yeah. And if like you, having a prepared lunch already to go, it's already in a little box. It's ready to go. You just pull it out and start eating. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're like, if you, if you're talking about doing this five days a week, you mm -hmm. don't want to go from breakfast till two or 3 PM without having a dose of protein. I won't get into yeah. all the like physiological reasons, but you want to have a serving of protein every three to five hours to maximize your potential to get mm -hmm. stronger and build muscle. So if you have a, a, a shaker bottle, like an insulated bottle, like where nobody can see what's in there or you, or you just don't care, like, yeah. you know, put a serving of milk or in there, make a protein shake and, and keep it in there. Something you can sip on, or, you know, if you put it in an insulated jug or, you know, cup, it's right. going to, it's going to be cold for yeah. several hours. That is your snack ready to mm -hmm. go. And then like backing up to the thing about being too busy, you are too busy to like come up with a plan in the moment. Mm -hmm. You're not too busy probably to actually eat unless you're, like you said, a school teacher or you're presenting all the time yeah. or something like that. Um, but I think it's socially acceptable to have a drink right. when you're doing both of those, th those two yeah, things. And if also, it's so. like a bottle, like these, these, um, ice shaker bottles that we use are fantastic cause you can use them as a shaker bottle, but they're insulated and no yeah. one can see what's in them. So you could have a milk and protein in here yeah. and get a, you know, 350 calories in this, you yep. know, and hold you over before you can get your lunch. Yeah. And, and like you said about bumping up the size of your breakfast, so many people eat like a 250 or 300 calorie mm -hmm. breakfast. If this is you, you might need to be eating a 750 calorie breakfast 
yeah. to sustain you <laughs> until You're gonna, yeah. until you can eat again. So don't be afraid to front load a lot of your calories mm -hmm. if this is you. Yep. Cool. All right. How do you train, prep, and eat well when you are on a very tight budget? Do you have a guide or some resource that can help with that? Anybody knows that groceries are like really expensive right they are now? Very expensive right now. <laughs> the eggs that we used to buy were like three fifty for a carton of eighteen. They're like six twenty now. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But yes, groceries. Groceries. We'll let's we'll start with groceries since we're talking about that. Eat well. Um, I think you know when when I groceries are expensive. But when I look at like our grocery list at the bill at the end of you know when we order or whatever, like Receipt. the whole foods are still very pretty reasonable it's yeah. where we get into like processed foods and things that are i mean and get, don't get me wrong eggs are expensive chicken is expensive things like that but as a whole they're like, more expensive than they used the to single be. ingredients are still the value versus like things that are pre-made mm -hmm. so one way to continue to eat well is to focus on eating this getting single ingredients where you have to then bring them home and prepare them yeah the trade-off is going to be more time for you yeah. like making these individual foods mm -hmm. in the meals. Like we used to buy the pre marinated, uh, chicken breast. Yeah. And it was delicious, but man, it got up it's to so like $15 yeah. a pound. So that's out. Yeah. So we, we buy the chicken breasts that are more like seven. Right. And so then we're marinating and we're seasoning them ourselves. Just, yeah. yeah. Simple things like that. So stick with the whole foods on the eating side. Um, on the training side, it just, I guess it depends on where you are in your budget, but you know, stuff like the why or um planet, planet fitness. fitness those things are very cheap per month if you're looking to go to a gym but then i mean resources are outside i mean just go being able to be outside or work out anywhere with your body weight well you could you can go for a very long time like that so being able to run outside being able to do squats push-ups you can go to a park and get access to do pull-ups sit-ups you can get by with doing these things and, and get very fit with just your body weight and then starting to like invest in you know, having some weights at home, if you don't have room for like a whole gym setup, even just some adjustable dumbbells will allow you to do the, I mean, d during like after COVID, this is where, this is kind of what went on. And we yeah. helped so many people just train in their living rooms and their basements, wherever they had with just a few pair of dumbbells. And you, so you can get by for a very long time with just some dumbbells, some bands, or just your body weight. Yeah. It's not a permanent solution. And like, <clears throat> you know, just running and, um, doing cardio out on the street and, and doing body weight stuff. It's not optimal probably for most people's goals, but you can, impre you can you improve can your fitness your, yeah, for, for sure. sure. But if you're going to, uh, you know, if we're talking about like building muscle and getting stronger, you're going to need to get act access to some weights. Like, yeah. like you said, the dumbbells, mm -hmm. don't forget, like look around at your friends that are already mm -hmm. doing this. Like, is there anybody that you can jump in with and train with them? They yeah. might have more equipment than you have. Um, keep your eye on used things like, Facebook marketplace, mm -hmm. check out used equipment stores like play it again, sports. Yeah. And, um, Online I was just and stuff, you know, Facebook yeah. marketplace or whatever for people selling off some equipment mm -hmm. and going back to, well, I got two things in my mind. So I don't want to forget either <laughs> going back to the, the nutrition side of things about saving money. You know, don't be afraid to eat frozen or yeah. canned fruits and vegetables. Like if they're significantly cheaper, you know, go for it for sure. Frozen because there's nothing like done to them. It's just, they're just frozen and the nutrition is still there. Canned, you start to blur the lines of like, what is in the can? How much sodium is in there? Are there juices? I think you about like, the labels. you gotta check the labels, but frozen. Yeah. For fr frozen is definitely like, especially like berries. Mm -hmm. We always buy the frozen berries Yeah, because he eats a ton of like raspberries and like way cheaper than buying fresh raspberries. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, one thing I would say on both that we, or these are absolutely free is we have like three free workout yeah. programs that you can do. So if you do have access to some weights, like mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about finding a program to follow. Yeah. We just actually put on the website, the two week turnaround. That's a great dumbbells only two week training program. Gives you some nutrition advice in there too. Mm -hmm. uh, we have arms, abs, and you know, the rest, uh, both of these that can be done with dumbbells or a barbell. Um, yeah. So that you, yeah, and you can ton. repeat those programs yeah. over and over again. Full I, body, full body fit was one of our old ones and mm -hmm. that's still up there. Um, I can't remember how long that one is. Maybe that's from 2018, at least a month, Oh, a month of workouts. Oh, yeah. So that one's like, yeah, I think that is a month yeah. long. So I'll put links to all those in the show notes mm -hmm. and you can also download our free uh, grocery and meal prep guide. Yeah. You know, she talked about the benefit of eating mostly whole unprocessed foods. That's what you're going to find in this mm -hmm. grocery guide. So take a look through it, see what you like in there, follow the process that we outlined for pulling out 
uh, the right proteins, carbs, and yeah. fats for you, and then read our advice on turning those into meals. And that's probably going to be about the cheapest way yeah. that, that you can build a meal. So I'll put the link for all those in the show notes mm-hmm. too. All right. What is your biggest fitness or health pet peeve? <laughs> I like these questions. <laughs> All right, go for it. So pet peeves can sometimes come across as complaining. So you, guys, you always have to <laughs> careful, be careful. careful. <laughs> I would say the biggest one for me is just like the fear mongering that goes on in the health mm. and fitness world. And I, even outside of that, just, you know, coming out of the season where we're all together with friends and family. Yeah. How many times did you hear somebody at Thanksgiving or Christmas? I'm not talking about our family, but everybody listening say something like, oh, that's bad for you. Or don't do that. It's bad. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like there's all this like fear mongering, like yeah. do this and it's going to be bad for you. Oh, deadlifts. Those are bad for your back. Uh-huh. Uh, don't eat, uh, don't drink canned soda. Those are bad for you. It's like people say things are going to be bad for you, but they don't actually understand the science behind yeah. it. And they probably don't even have any experience with, um, doing it themselves. They've just or heard that maybe themselves. they just heard it yeah. <laughs> or they had like a one time limited experience and they just formed an opinion about it that they've stuck to for the last yeah. 20 years because of that. Or they got some terrible advice from you know, somebody else Mm -hmm. and they've just stuck with it and they've maybe scared somebody out of becoming healthy or improving whatever, because they've been like, Oh, well that person said it's bad or it's going to, I'm going to get hurt or whatever. So it's just ridiculous. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. Um, I think mine is like people thinking that like, if you're are fit or if you, you know, if you're fit and you take care of your health, that is easy for you. Mm -hmm. But like, I like you, they're on, you're on a different level. Yeah. You're not operating on a different, everybody's, no one's, no one's operating on different levels here. It's just like the effort that you put in. So that's one, that's my biggest one. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. People, people see the outcome that somebody gets and they're like, ah, oh, well it must be They're natural easy. at that. Like they're natural. They're not, that's natural, easy for them. This is hard for me. Like, yeah. no, it's, it's hard it's, for everybody. Yeah. And I think we do that even with like, with like athletes, you know, like we might look at them and be like, well, that's that they're natural. That's, e- that's easy for them. Like they're putting in a ton of work. If you were able, if you know, are you willing to put in the amount of work that like someone like Tom Brady puts in to be that good at football? Yeah. No, <laughs> you're not going to be that good at football because you're not putting in that work. He probably has some natural abilities, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like every- we just assume like that's easy for them. That's natural. Everybody's dealt like a different hand genetically and that limits like the potential yeah. that you could reach. But most people come nowhere near their genetic potential because they're limited by the amount of effort that mm-hmm. they're willing to put in. It's amazing how much effort substitutes <laughs> for genetics, yeah. you know? So yeah. All right. Um, how can you work out with your spouse when you're on different programs? I think what this person meant was like, um, not, not like from like, how do we logistically work around our schedules kind of thing? Yeah. Or how do we how share, do share, equipment? share the equipment? It was more like, how can we build camaraderie yeah. and like feel like we're working together if we're not doing the same? Right. Actually, thing. we're in that boat right now because you're doing a rehab program still for your shoulder. So we are doing different programs right now. Yeah. So the whole time I'm like, boo, boo, Jonathan's not doing digital barbell. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> True. Oh, she's a savage. <laughs> um, all right. So my advice to this, I actually entered this client off the podcast too, but my advice for him was to find a common goal that he and his wife could work on outside of their workouts, Mm. you know, fitness related. So like, um, it could be like improving their mile time together. It could be working on their strict pull-ups together. Um, you know, taking like a base, a base, what do they call them? Baseline CrossFit workout or something, Mm -hmm. you know, like testing, working on the individual components, then testing in a month to Mm -hmm. see who improved the most, like finding something that you can both root each other, on with that you're mm-hmm. both doing and something that you can be competitive with together so that there's yeah. like something you can give each other a hard time about and encourage each other also. Or like logistically, if you are like actually working out at the similar times together, but you're doing different things, like, you know, if one of you is doing digital barbell and the other's not, you could, you could bring that person on for the fun finisher yeah. that digital barbell That's gives true. you. And like, y'all could do that like last piece together or mm-hmm. do some abs together or something at the end of the workout. It's kind of, that's a kind great of brings idea. it home. Yeah. I like that. So are you saying you're going to do part of my workout today? You don't have any fun finishers. Sorry. <laughs> oh, All you've right. got a hair on your shirt that's been bugging Sorry. me. Okay. Got it. Um, where are we? Number seven. When should I breathe during my weightlifting sets? That's the thing. You shouldn't. You just, <laughs> just hold, breathe. just hold, hold, hold your breath when you walk in the gym and exhale when you leave. During a lift. Let's, oh. you know. Okay. 
basically when you, when you are moving weight, you want to be tight and you want to be holding your breath to create that, um, what am I, they call, what am I they call it the Valsalva maneuver. Yeah. I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> You're distracting me Sorry. with your bridges. <laughs> <laughs> my pants, my pants were falling off. You want to, you want to bring, you want to bring your breath in before you start a rep. Mm-hmm. You want to close off your throat. You want to fill your stomach with air, contract your abs and keep that all the same until you finish mm-hmm. that rep. So I you, think you breathe between. Let's kind of break reps. it down a little bit. And there's different kinds of exercises too. Yeah. Um, I'm like, let's picture a deadlift, like, you know, you're getting set up and you're ready to, to like lift the weight off the floor. So you're going to, you're going to go through your five step deadlift setup, of course. And the last thing you're going to do is brace, brace and take that giant breath. And one thing we've talked with a lot of clients about is like, when you take that breath, you're not like sucking in to like bring your, make your stomach small. You're like, you're like filling your stomach with air when you, you, to like make it tight, almost like to make it like expand Mm -hmm. to, um, to protect everything. And you're going to hold your breath. You're going to lift the weight and then, then you're going to set it down on the ground. And then that's when you're going to reset your breath. So the point, the point of this is to like use your trunk, your stomach mm -hmm. as a a way to stabilize your spine, Mm -hmm. to make, turn it into like a rigid unit. So if you think about, well, when do I want my spine to be rigid and immobile. It's when the whole time the when weight. you're moving yeah. the load. Cause so, if you imagine yourself, like, you know, lifting the weight and then like taking a breath and like what happens to your body when you do take a breath, you don't want to be doing any movement when you're holding weight. Um, same thing. We can break it down like press or squat. You know, you're, you're getting your set, you're getting set up, you're ready to go. That final piece is the bracing, the, gi- the giant held breath in squat or press and then reset that breath. I th- and a lot of people forget this applies to exercises where you're laying on your back too, mm-hmm. where you're being, where your spine is being supported yeah. by something. You still want to abdominally brace just to create that tension in your body. Yeah. If you look at like the world's strongest power lifters and strong men and that kind of stuff, like they're, they're, they might as well be doing a squat when they're doing that bench press, mm-hmm. the way that they're, they're filling their stomach with air yeah. and, and bracing the whole time. So yeah. go on YouTube and search that if you haven't. And I think that there's two other things to bring up here. It's like, you can be, you can be braced. I always used to use this example, like physically in the gym. Like if someone were like to punch you in the stomach and you knew it was coming, you know how, you know how you would like tighten yourself, you mm-hmm. tighten your stomach to like brace for that blow. You can be in that position and still like be taking breaths. It's so true. imagine you're st- you're doing a set of 10 deadlifts. You're not going to like release everything at the bottom of each, mm-hmm. each of each lift if we're going like touch and go to the bottom. We're going to continue to have that brace to like I, I could take a punch in my stomach and and I'm, I you know, I'm not going to be like, Ooh, you know. Yeah. But I can reset my breath quickly every time the weight is on the ground. That's true. Same thing this for like a set practice. of squat. It does take some practice. Um and then like in a conditioning style workout, where, let's say you're doing like a bunch of air squats in a uh-huh. row. You're not going to use this technique where you're, you know, bracing your yeah, abs. Because we're not, we're not moving a load. Right. We're moving our body. And it's actually kind of helpful in these kind of scenarios to establish a breathing pattern. Yeah. It like helps you get through the reps easier. You know, o- like, obviously it keeps you full oxygen so your muscles don't mm-hmm. fatigue as fast, but it just helps you get through the reps. Get a if, rhythm. You, if you have like a, a pa- maybe a like rhythm. you're doing your squats and like every time you stand, you reset your breath. Every time you stand, you reset your breath. Yeah. Same thing with like push ups. Like every time you're on the ground, you reset your breath. Push up every time you're on the ground, you reset your breath. Yep. I like it. I hope that helps. Um, all right, next one. Can eating too little make you gain weight? AKA starvation mode. Okay. Um, confession. There was a point in time where I thought this was a real thing Okay. where it's like, the reason I can't lose weight is because I'm eating too little. Too my, little. my body has switched over into starvation mode to try to preserve whatever weight I still have mm-hmm. in case I really am starving. starving. Yeah. It's not true. Okay. <laughs> but myth busters over here. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk about why people might think this and, and why it's not true. It's a big topic, so I'm going to take a deep breath. <laughs> so uh, let's think about somebody who truly is starving. Like worst case scenario, not pleasant to think about, but somebody in like a concentration camp. Um, that would be the ultimate example of some if somebody reaches this point where they really are eating too little. They don't stop losing mm-hmm. weight. You just continue to lose weight. Look at the people who are on the show alone where they're foraging for their own food and eating 300, 400, 500 calories per day. 
their body doesn't switch over into starvation mode. They just keep, they keep burning fat weight. until yeah. they have no fat left to burn. So that is what actually happens when you continue to eat less calories than your body needs. You're in a calorie deficit. The problem is that people are in a caloric deficit mindset a lot of the times, but not actually in a mm -hmm. calorie deficit. Now, calorie deficit is what causes those people to lose weight. But if you're just in a calorie deficit mindset, you're thinking that you're eating only a little bit of a little bit of food because you're obsessed with how much you're eating. You're constantly thinking about food. You have an unhealthy relationship with food. You have an unhealthy relationship with your body image. So you're always in this deficit mindset, but you've mm -hmm. become where you're not actually in a calorie deficit. And this isn't like a nefarious thing where you, you know, you're lying to anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the process that happens. Now they've done research on this too. Like even people who are told to accurately track how much they're eating, they're trying hard. They're mm -hmm. not trying to fake the thing. They're under reporting how much they eat on average between 25 and 50%. Mm -hmm. So you could think that you're in starvation mode, but you're just eating a lot more than you are. Yeah. And this gets even worse in people who are obese. They can report up to 70% less wow. than they're eating per day, even when they're really trying to track. Mm -hmm. I pulled up this study um, talking about this very statistic mm -hmm. and it says in this study that they did it was uh 70% yeah, in obese people under reporting was positively associated with older age higher body fat percentage in both men and women and in negative body image in both genders so mm -hmm. people who had a negative body image whether they were a man or a woman mm -hmm. both tended to under report and the the women who had a negative body image tended to under report their food intake by two, over two times how much they were eating so this could lead you to think that your body is in starvation mode. Mm -hmm. I'm only eating a thousand, 1200 calories per day. Like, and I'm not losing weight. Yeah. What's going on. You're not actually eating a thousand or 1200 calories yeah. per day. You're, you're unconsciously or consciously under reporting how much you're eating. Now the, mm -hmm. the side of this where it's actually like possible to, um, need to eat less calories to continue losing weight is really a symptom of what's called metabolic adaptation. Mm -hmm. It's like a scary sounding thing, but it's actually just a normal biological process caused by two main things. As you have lost weight on a diet, you're becoming a smaller person. You've affected your metab your, your basal metabolic rate, just how much energy it takes to keep a person alive. Smaller people just take less food to stay alive because they're a smaller mass mm -hmm. moving around. So let's say you went from 200 to 150 pounds and then you stop losing weight, eating the same number of calories. Well, the reason is, is because a 150 pound person needs a lot less calories to survive than the person that started at 200 pounds. So it's not that you hit starvation mode. It's that you're no longer in a calorie deficit because you're a smaller person. And then in the smaller scale of things, like if you stop losing weight um, on a diet, it's not because you're in starvation mode. It's because your body has subconsciously tried to meet up with how much energy you're putting in mm -hmm. by reducing your involuntary activity throughout the day, mm -hmm. which is a huge part of your calorie burn. Let's say you hit a plateau and suddenly you realize like, man, you know what? I used to walk around a whole lot mm -hmm. more. I don't do that anymore. Um, you know, I used to, you know, whatever I used to stand, like I used my standing desk yeah. a lot more. You know, I've noticed that I'm really like sitting down mm -hmm. a lot more. Like I just have less energy. I'm feeling more lethargic. Your body has just subconsciously made you move around less to match up with how much food you're eating. It's not that you're in starvation mode. It's just that again, just like the metabolic adaptation example, you're no longer in a calorie deficit. Your body's goal is always to keep you in homeostasis yeah. and it has these tools in its toolbox to make that happen. If you get to this um, point, like it's a highly specific scenario and you probably need to consult with, you know, a professional to figure mm -hmm. out how you're going to tackle it. It's way beyond the, the scope of this Q and A yeah. episode. So I hope that makes sense as far as starvation. Mode. Yeah. All right. Last one. Is it better to do cardio or weights first? My voice is worn out. So you start this one. <laughs> I mean, I think we've, uh, this depends on your goal. So if your goal is to get stronger, then I would do the weights first. If your goal is to train for some sort of endurance sport, or you're just, you want your endurance to get better before your strength, then yeah, I would do your, your cardio first. It just depends on what, what your particular goal is in general. The way I program for like general clients is I do all the strength work first and then we put the cardio at the end. Yeah. 
I think that's the perfect answer. Mm-hmm. I don't need to add anything to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't need to add to it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's my, it's my instinct, too, but I'm new, new year, new me. <laughs> wow. That's a way to end the podcast right there. Why don't you uh, tell everybody why they should sign up this month? Uh, because we have right now, if you sign up for custom training, you get a free month of custom nutrition. And how do they apply for a custom training program? Go to digitalbarbell.com, hit start today, fill out a little form and we will get back with you. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a great day.